Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' adventurous book. (laughs) James calls for help, and the shattering crash of the revolver shot carries a Tarzan and Clayton standing face to face in the jungle. James! Never! Tarzan seizes Clayton and swings him to his shoulders. Clayton struggles futilely and then stops. Surely this man who has rescued him from the leopard can mean him no harm. Tarzan springs into the lower branches of a great tree. He grips a trailing vine and, in spite of his double burden, swings into the lower terrace of the forest. Up, up he goes into the bending, swaying branches of the higher terrace. His sure eye and practiced hand carry them with incredible speed through the maze of interwoven vines and branches. Faster and faster they speed toward the hut. Now the foliage is less dense. Tarzan's penetrating gaze sees Sabre, crouched, ready to hurl her bulk at the frail lattice window of the hut. She screams! The light falls give under her hurtling weight. Tarzan knows the lattice will not withstand many such shocks. He leaps into space, grips a sturdy vine, a dizzy, flashing arc. He lets go, grips the lower branch. It bends. Again, he lets go. Down, down he drops. He disappears into a deep well of tree fern and bamboo. Spinning, swinging downward from branch to vine, he plunges toward the jungle floor. Tarzan's feet touch the ground. Clayton flies to his back. Together they race toward the hut, clearing the intervening ground with lightning speed. They bore leaps. The last bar snaps. The great yellow head and four paws are inside the hut. Tarzan covers the last few feet with a flying leap. He seizes Sabor by the tail. Twist. Flings his body back. Feet raced against the hut. Weaves with all his mighty strength. Clayton's at the man is trying to help. A ring of the Tarzan shouts to Clayton to point the poisoned arrow into Sabor. The Englishman can't understand the eight man's orders. Sabor's clawing, fighting to force her way into the window. The smile of rage, she lets go her clutch on the sill. The twist and pounce upon the enemy behind her. Tarzan lets go. With the speed of a striking cobra, he launches himself full on the infuriated beast's back. Like lightning, his arm is perfect the roof snake. He digs his feet into Sabor's loins. Tarzan's biceps swell. Back, back. Inch by inch, he pulls the funny twisting head. Sabor throws herself on her side, crashing, tearing. Her working claws barely miss Clayton as he leaps aside. Philander breaks through the brush border in the jungle. One glance through the doors and spider with Sabor, and they start to run toward them. Sabor twists her head, the snapping, foaming jaws quite late, the arm of steely muscle about her throat. Tarzan tries to get his knife. Sabor springs to her feet. She leaps into the air. Harder and harder, Tarzan pulls the flashing head. Now he has his knife. Back, back, he forces Sabor's straining neck. The knife flashes up. Down! Again and again, the gleaming blade rises and falls, plunges deep into Sabor's unprotected side. Slowly, the lioness crumples to the ground. Tarzan leaps aside, sets his foot on Sabor's neck, raises his face to the sky. The victory cry of the bull ape that has made his kill echoes and re-echoes through the jungle. Tarzan glances once at Clayton, reaches for a low-hanging branch, and swings himself into the tree. Jane! Jane, are you hurt? Wait a minute. Just a second. One at a time, please. Oh, I heard a shot. I thought Pepper had returned. And when I went to the door, there, there was a lion. I slammed the door. Then came a terrible scratching. Then it stopped. For the moment, I thought it had gone away. The next thing I knew, its terrible yellow eyes were glaring at me from the window. Oh, for hours, it seemed as though I couldn't move. Then I remembered the revolver. I shot him. Yes, Jane. We heard the shot. You had came from the hut and... Well, you know the rest. The most amazing exhibition I have ever witnessed. Philander and I arrived precisely at the moment when when the uh, the uh, the, the uh, pagan person leapt upon the back of the lion. Such strength, such astounding agility. He saved me only a few moments before we heard Jane shot. I was attacked by a leopard, but just as the beast was about to spring... Don't you think that he's Tarzan of the Apes? Tarzan of the Apes? Oh, no. No, I don't believe he can be. Cecil spoke to him, but he doesn't speak English. Tarzan can read and write English, we know, because of the warning he sent to the door of the hut. But, Cecil, this man did speak to you in some strange tongue. Ah, you say he spoke to Cecil? Uh, Yes. He shouted something to me while he was fighting with the lion. Exactly. It proves beyond the shadow of a doubt that he as I have never doubted, has had contact with other humans. Now, Clayton, 
What sort of sounds did she shout to you? Well, I, it... Oh, by Jove, I'm dashed if I can remember. Did he make any such sound as laugh? Or perhaps laugh? No. No, I remember no such sound. Why? Sir Richard Paddy has worked out 320 primitive roots from which all Aryan language is derived. Uh, the, uh, now, uh, the sound, that, laugh, laugh, the dropping of the tongue and pressing of the tongue against the teeth, uh, signifies laugh, to lift. I thought, perhaps, if he lifted you or wished to lift something, he might have said laugh. No, I'm sure there was no such sound. She did shout something, as near as I can recall, which sounded like cow, uh, bummed. There was no L sound? You're quite sure? Of course, Professor, in the excitement, I could not really qualify as a scientific observer. Uh, no, of course not, of, of course not. Uh, still, I wish you had been able to retain some definite syllabic context. Perhaps a lust sound. Well, still, Daddy, it's evident the man has some sort of rational language. Even if he could not convey his thought to Cecil. Uh, no doubt of it, Jane, no doubt of it. Uh, uh, the mere fact that Clayton recognized the shout as some attempt to convey information or direction. My thought exactly. Then the fact would show that the man is social, tribal. Well, well it's getting frightfully cold out here. Let's go inside the hut. And Cecil. Uh, yes, Jane. I think before any of us tries to sleep here, after the experience we've just had, we ought to get some sort of that window barred and some sort of way that will, that will prevent anything like this happening again. I thoroughly agree. And tonight it will be fixed. Well, thank you, Cecil. Come, give me a hand, Professor. Let's move this carcass away from the hut. Uh, yes, uh, perhaps uh, we might as well. Uh, uh, bless me. <laughs> we two cannot even find it. Yet the man who killed it held it with one arm. Astounding. Uh, don't bother moving that. It'll be gone in the morning. The jackals, you know. Why, well, yes, of course. How silly of me. Uh, Captain Philander, it was a natural, if I may be permitted the expression, a, a, a most natural thought. Yeah, of course. I realize that Jane has been through a harrowing experience and so on, but do you suppose uh, uh, perhaps we, we might, uh, we might, uh, well, in short, are we to have dinner? Uh, really, Philander, that is quite a good suggestion. Uh, now, now that you broke the subject, you know, I feel that I myself could do with something to fortify the inner man. I really hate to say anything to Jane. Uh, it is uh, uh, rather, uh, uh, isn't it? <laughs> However, it will take her mind off the excitement. Uh, yes, I feel we should soon her in some manner to miss it. Then, with your approval, Professor, let us enter the hut. Uh, very well. Uh, uh, Jane! Jane, my dear! Uh, 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 Jane, my love, uh, uh, could you prepare a, uh, a light provision? Uh, in other words, something to eat? The light from the cabin streams across the clearing, cutting the jungle into strips of black and silver. Animal trails, mere breaks in the brush by bay, now loom like yawning caverns in their inky blackness. From afar off, the harsh, rasping laugh of a hyena tells that the scavenger of the jungle has found some undevoured kill. One by one, the stars pierce the sable sky. The young moon... Slender as a silver thread, glints through the sparse tops of the alleys. Sleepy monkeys open and close their eyes as Tarzan leisurely brushes his way through the branches toward the hut. Just as the ape, which for sheer joy of living, swings by the hour from branch to branch, so Tarzan, fed and rested, drops to the light-flooded clearing at the hut. Cautiously, he approaches the window, looks inside, with quickened pulse, entranced, he watches the white she he had rescued earlier in the day, seated at the table, his table. He longs to speak to her, but dares not, convinced that, like the men, she will not understand him. 
Jane Porter finishes the letter she's been writing to her friend, rises, and puts out the light. Patiently, Tarzan waits until his keen ears tell him that all movement within the hut has ceased for the night. Cautiously, he moves closer to the window. He hears the deep, regular breathing which denotes sleep. Slowly, carefully, he passes his hand through the broken lattice, takes the letter from the table. Quietly, he moves back, folds the paper, places it in his quiver with his arrows, and melts into the jungle shadows while the hyena creeps forward to the dead body of Sailor. <laughs> 